France's uh, Emmanuel Macron is on his way to Washington. He'll be arriving at Joint Base Andrews in the next hour, ahead of President Trump's first state dinner. That's tomorrow. German Chancellor Angela Merkel will also be visiting in the White House later on this week. And there are reports that uh, Macron and, Mar and Merkel are plotted, uh, really plotting their tactics before their representative, uh, respective meetings here with President Trump. So they can kind of get him to come around to their point of view on things like trade in the Iran deal. To former Reagan economic advisor Art Laffer, and if President Trump's uh, is he in the driver's seat here? It feels like, you know, of course, there are uh, a lot of pushback against President Trump. But more recently, we've seen an acceptance of him, particularly by Macron, not necessarily as much by Merkel. But who has the upper hand this week? Well, first place, I wouldn't assume that Merkel and Macron uh, are in cahoots on this deal or on any deal. There is a lot of dissension within the EU, Charles, that these guys aren't just team players against everyone else. Number two, I think Donald Trump is in charge. I think he's proven himself enormously capable uh, on the world scene and the domestic economy. So they would really like to have him on their side. Now, obviously, Macron and Merkel have a have a common interest in not having protectionist measures put on by the U.S., as I think a lot of people are. Uh, but with regard to Iran, I wouldn't be surprised if there are differences in their views. You know, again, uh, I, I want to remind the audience, because uh, when President Trump initially w went out to NATO, uh, all the leaders there seemed to not take him seriously. And I want to just sort of show a video to the audience just to kind of remind him when everyone was snickering at him. Well, maybe we don't have that video. <laughs> when we get it, Art will share it. In the meantime, I would love it. I would love it. I'm oh, looking it forward is. to it because look, look, Trump is taken very seriously. Okay, well, no, listen, we're, we're showing it right now. This is back in May of last year. Uh, as you recall, he went there, and uh, they kind of all... <laughs> look, at, look at that. You can just see the memes right now. I mean, I, they'd probably be endless, and I'm sure back then there were uh, the sort of the world leaders uh, laughing at the, this, uh, this American. But again, Europeans have always laughed at Americans, right? We're this great big giant baby Huey with, uh, with so much power, but we don't have the wisdom to use it properly. And, and, we, and we have bad wine, wine choices. But let, let, two, two things you brought up, though, Art. <laughs> My <laughs> on, on trade. Germany has really gotten a, a really sweet deal with the euro. And I, and I think a lot of these other nations, uh, of course, the U.K. witnessing, uh, did, never got into Europe, but also witnessing that uh, this whole EU thing was, it was a bad deal in the first place. A lot of other nations are saying, hey, you know what, this whole unification thing, this whole one trade policy seems to be working very well for the nation that has a surplus, that can sell their automobiles at premiums around the world, but it hasn't done much for the rest of the, w rest of the world. It's, where's France on that? Because I, I never knew, it feels like France and Germany always vibing for leadership in, in the continent. Well, there are always all sorts of misperceptions about what a trade balance surplus or deficit is for a country. By the way, we had the biggest trade deficit and a hugely worsening trade deficit under Reagan as we had the biggest boom ever. The dollar rose sharply in the market, stock market rose. So trade deficits I don't think are a problem myself. But I think the European common market is very good at having a common currency, just like the U.S. dollar is for a common currency. And I think the rest of the deal uh, is not good. I would like to see Brexit occur with lots of those countries. But I do think it's very valuable for Europe to have a common currency. That I really think is wonderful. But all the rest of the stuff I think hurts Europe. They should have different trade policies. They should have different tax policies. They should have different regulatory policies. Governments should compete in Europe just right. like they do right. in the U.S. Yeah. And it's good for them and it's good for us, Charles. Yeah, you know, listen, I'm sure Greece, uh, Italy, Portugal, those countries probably wish they had their own central bank, right? Maybe they could have Printed their way out of some of the trouble they've been in. Well, but I don't know about that, but I do. <laughs> they, I do know they wish they had had separate uh, policies there, because frankly, all of this stuff that they're doing with all the underwriting and the zero interest and all that stuff is just lousy for Europe. I was just over there. I did the keynote at the European Union conference in uh, Bratislava, and you know, the the thing is, I told them all that they need to have everyone leave so they have competition amongst their governments that are exploiting their citizenry. Europe is an right. awful place to be a citizen. It's it's really a great is. place to be a government employee, yeah, though. And it's a great place to go, go sightseeing and things like that. I mean, Europe's still and, living on past glory. But we have less than a minute, Art, and i got to ask okay, you. Okay, sorry. Yes, uh, go because ahead, Because I know sir. you spoke with Larry Cutlow. You, you, you're very tight with him. Uh, how's he doing so far in your uh, approximation with, the, with respect to uh, getting his ideas across to President Trump and perhaps having President Trump alter his approach? 
I don't know about having him alter his approach, and I, I would not wish that for anyone. Larry Kudlow is the best that ever has been in that job. Let me just tell you, and I've seen him all since the 13th century, but Larry Kudlow is the best ever. He's a great communicator. He knows how to use TV. He's a well-educated economist, and he knows the political real, real world there. And the most important thing, Charles, he loves that job. And you can't do a good job unless you love that job. And Larry Kudlow is the best ever, and I couldn't be happier than I am. And by the way, Trump is wonderfully respectful of Larry. He loves Larry and vice versa. There's a really close relationship. Right. And I'm expecting the very best out of this administration. All right. And I'm really hopeful. Art Lafford, it's always great having you on, buddy. Talk Charles, to you again you're soon. the best, too. Thank <laughs> you very Thanks. much. <laughs>